Okay, thanks. Thanks, Seth. Yep. So, as Seth says, my name's Graham Brown, one of the pre-sales solutions engineers based in the UK, um, specifically working with true site operations management, capacity optimization, and Helix Cloud Cost Solutions. So this is the second one of these sessions that's been specifically focused on ITDA, certainly that, that I've been involved in. And today we're going to drill down into using ITDA to do a, um, on how, how we can relatively easily use ITDA to start looking at tracking some application transactions, um, assuming you know, obviously the correct information is available in the application logs. But um, I'll explain that as, as we go through. So, Okay, let's try and advance my slides. There we go. So um, I'm not going to spend a long time on the on the slides. Um, just top level, I assume people that are on the call know what ITDA is and the log analytics. You know, obviously it's about being able to collect information from all of your different logs and events and so on across your whole environment, being able to analyze that, collect it, index it, and then be able to um, understand what's what's happening and um, manipulate that data in a single place as, as details here. So, okay, so what I wanted to focus on was really about um, transactions and how we can look at tracing those. So first of all, just a level set, obviously, you know, most um, applications or transactional applications, you've got end users that are accessing the system from some sort of browser or mobile device or, or whatever it is. And that, um, and the back end, I suppose, to, to those systems could be on-premise environments, it could be cloud environments, or it could be a mixture of both. And those actual applications could be written in any number of different technologies or development environments, different languages, and so on. Most application transaction monitoring tools will work with specific types of applications um, and will we'll therefore work, work just with those. What we're looking you know, with what we're doing here with ITDA, it's, it's fairly generic, it can work across all these different types of environments. From the end user's perspective, they're just interested in the application working, that they're um, getting the responses that they need, whether that you know, it's an internet banking application or whatever it is, that they can log in, that they can see their balance and perform actions. And it needs to respond within a reasonable time. So making sure that you can perform the actions and that the actions are performing in the um, correct amount of time. Typically, all applications, when they're written, will be writing information to log files. There's messages being written to log files with information about the transactions that are being performed, and those appear in all sorts of different places. So, and, it, and in fact, I was um, attended an online training course recently about microservices, and one of the things they were saying in there is, that, you know, you, you really need to make sure you detail what's going on within all of these different microservices and the transactions that are being performed so that you can trace them across the different microservices, which again lends itself to, to what we're looking at doing here. Okay, so using IT data analytics for transaction monitoring, there's a lot of useful information in, in log files and quite often what we see with different applications is that they will log the information to files and include things like transaction IDs or reference IDs, et cetera, about the different transactions into those log files. It's very difficult to trace that manually and follow that thread, particularly when it's spread across multiple log files, but even when it's in a single log file, the volume of data that, that's going in there makes it very difficult to um, analyze it as a, as a human. So ITDA allows us to collect all of that information, normalize it in its um, own internal form, and allow us to then automate the analysis of um, all of that transaction data. In terms of why, why you should care as, as, as TSOM users, the first thing is uh, if, you, if you have a TSOM license, ITDA is there and part of your license. So it's something you can start getting up uh, and running and using. And they
Oh boy. Sorry about this, folks. Looks like we lost him again. <clears throat> I guess uh, we're having some transatlantic challenges with the UK <laughs> telco system. So give us just a minute. I'm sure he'll figure out that he was offline and we'll bring him back online. Uh, Jamil, has just, Jamil has just put the lie to my, my hypothesis. We'll say that uh, it's not the UK, it is wherever Graham happens to be, and I'm not 100% sure where he lives. So, But I will entertain you in the meantime. Um, <clears throat> so for those of you who aren't aware, while we're waiting for Graham to get back, um, I can see he's still moving his mouse there, so hopefully he's not thinking that he's, he's still talking. Um, uh, I don't know, for those of you uh, who are online, if you saw recently that we made an announcement at the BMC exchanges in London and New York about the new Converge strategy where we're bringing together our ITOM products with our ITSM products in a formal unified platform. Um, and uh, there's we put a lot of marketing stuff out there. I've also started some conversations on communities to get the you know get feedback from our users about what they think about the strategy and you know what they expect to see from us so if you're not aware of that um i'd encourage you if you go to communities you can check out the bmc helix community uh, or you can ping me directly and i can point you to those those resources um and uh hopefully you can get involved in the conversation all right i think graham is back let me make him a presenter let me unmute him. Graham, you back? Hi, Seth. There we go. Uh, All right. No idea what. Oh, hopefully. it's okay. I, I, I got back. I got back in really quick this time because I had the um, I had the number written down, whereas last time I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Anyway, uh, right. Let me. I'll edit out. Carry on. Yeah, Sorry. I'll edit out the stuff on uh, before we put the recording up. So, go ahead. Okay. So we've got the, uh, the the files collecting data and, and running there. So let me just, in the interest of time, let's just go straight in and, and have a quick look. So I've got ITDA collecting from those log files. So as you would expect, you know, it's it's collecting the data we can drill in and we can see the all the information being collected, just standard um, capability of being able to collect uh, the data from all of those different files. Okay, so what I've done is built some dashboards on um, top of that, and I think probably, as I say, in the interest of time, I will start from the dashboards and we'll drill down and have a quick look at the um, queries being used. So again, starting here with these dashboards that look at the, um, the, the sort of overall view, I can see things like the, the number of um, transactions being performed, um, just by counting the entries that are that are in the log files, as, as you would expect, and you can see people that are logging in and, and logging out. And um, I've got, um, trying, you know, you would expect there to be an even number of logins and logouts, as we we very much got here. I can also break things down into different users, as I've uh, done here, where we can see the uh, different users that are accessing the system and actions there. Um, performing as we've also got it broken down into whether it's an update or query because there's a sort of type of transaction is, is part of the information that's in, that's in my log. So this this to me is yeah this is very much just sort of accessing the information that's within within the logs and um, surfacing that here just by looking at the uh, entries that are there. And as you would expect with the um, log file well with the ITDA dashboards, we can drill down from here and then we could just focus in and just see the uh, transactions being performed by the user Fred, for example, because I clicked on Fred. So that's that's fine. What I really wanted to um, touch on here, though, was how we can then use ITDA to really group together the information in the um, transactions. And let me also just kick something off 
to cause a failure that we can look at in a moment as well. Okay, so I've got um, it coming in and giving me the average duration of the completed transactions. So if we take a completed transaction to mean it's got something where we've got a start transaction, we've got someone that's gone through a number of steps. In my example, it's process one, process two. It could be process three, four, five, you know, view bank balance, transfer money, and so on, whatever steps. And then it ends with a logout or an end transaction, completed transaction. So I can then use ITDA to stitch all that together and look at the amount of time it's taken to um, perform that transaction. And that's what we're doing here with these saved queries, in that it's if I drill down on this, you'll see that now, if we look at the save query, it's looking across all my transaction logs, and I've got this group command, and it's grouping by transaction ID. So if you remember, in my logs, I've got a transaction ID for um, each individual transaction, as we would typically see in, a, in an application. And then we tell it that we look for something which starts the transaction. So I've just got some text started transaction in my um, logs, and then we're looking for text that means the ended end of a transaction, which I've got completed transaction. And we tell it the maximum amount of time we expect a transaction to take. And that's because when it goes through and finds all of these, and as we can see, if we look at some of this here, you can see everything now is grouped by transaction ID. It's not grouped um, by time or anything else, it stitched everything together across the multiple logs so that we can see things as a single transaction. So we can see that this user has logged in, performed um, this transaction ID, and uh, performed these different steps. And it doesn't matter how many different steps they perform within here, we will catch all of those as long as the transaction ID is the same. And it will also give us then the actual duration of that um, transaction as well, because it looks at the start time and the end time of that and pulls that together and gives us a duration. So then I'm able to look at that and get the um, average duration when I plot that in a, in a dashboard. Or um, if I want to create a notification based on this, then I can do that as well. So I could send an event back to the presentation, to um, sorry, to TrueSight Operations Manager, so that um, if the average duration of a transaction goes outside a uh, particular time frame, time, then I can notify based on that as well. So it's automatically putting that together. It's typically in an application. It's you know you've got lots and lots of data. All of the transaction IDs. If you've got hundreds of transactions being performed, um, you know every minute or every hour, whatever it is. But the volume of data that's going through, it's very difficult to do this analysis yourself. But we can use ITDA to stitch that together and give us a view of those individual transactions and get the response time as we've got here. Now, other information I'm able to pull out from that as well is I was looking for completed um, transactions there. So we've got a start and a end um, as defined in that group command. I can also split things out by different transaction types. So I can also look at the um, average duration of a query versus an update transaction because again, we can just then subset that and plot that separately as you can see here. So again, I can drill down and we can see just for update transactions, the information. So you can break those out as you would expect. If we also look at this, we can see, um, we can break that down into individual users as well. So where um, a transaction has completed successfully, the, the users that are performing that. The other thing I wanted to highlight is how to pick up that a transaction has failed. So that was that little script I kicked off to, to change the um, entries in the log file. So 
I can now see that particular users having issues. Again, this could be picked up and notified via the notifications within ITDA. But we can look at the detail here. If we drill down from here, we can actually see you know, what we're doing is that we're not saying I'm searching for some sort of error or some sort of failure um, string, as you might think you would normally do in a sort of log file monitoring and analysis. What we're doing is we're still saying we're grouping by this transaction ID, and we're looking for started transaction, and we're looking for completed transaction, and we're saying that it has to um, occur within a minute. And what's happened is that the group command now, instead of having a status complete, now only has a status starts with. Now, there's lots of different statuses we can get, but in this example, we've got a starts with. So what's actually happened is that the transaction started, something's happened, the user hasn't actually gone through certain processes, we've got errors or whatever, and here I just put out a message saying failed transaction. But we're not searching for that message, it's the fact that it hasn't completed within the time that we'd expect that we actually get a failure generated, because all we see is a starts with, and we don't actually get a complete message generated out of this. So we can pick up these sort of abnormalities in terms of the flow through the transaction where we've not actually ended it cleanly, even without knowing any sort of error messages or anything that we want to see, but um, we're, we're able to let the tool pick that up for us and, and highlight those to us. Now, I've shown this um, all with the um, ITDA dashboard and, and drilling down to my uh, saved searches. You can expect you know, but I just wanted to highlight this as well. You're able to also then surface these um, saved searches and information back up within the uh, TrueSight presentation server as well. So from um, the TrueSight presentation server, we can have dashboards that are uh, set up to show our um, saved searches. We can see our, I've just got them represented slightly differently. I've got our failed transactions here that are appearing um, as bar charts. I've got the completed transaction volume across the bottom and the, and the breakdown of update versus query. And you can do exactly the same things in that we can click on this and it will drill down and show us the underlying detail and show us where the, um, transactions have failed for those users and at what point they failed. So as I say, it's, it's allowing you to both pick up the duration of a transaction by stitching things together using something like a transaction ID, but also to pick up when things aren't working correctly, you'd be able to see the steps that have been gone through for that transaction in the order they have occurred because it's pulled together all of the relevant information automatically for you for each transaction ID. And you can then step through those and see that information in, in detail. So I'm just about out of time, despite uh, being kicked off the uh, phone a couple of times. So hopefully I've managed to get through and, and give you an idea of, of what I meant by this. So as long as your um, log files have got some sort of um, transaction ID in which, as I say, for a lot of applications, those were already there. You're able to use this group command to search across your log files and start analyzing your data as a, a transaction chunks and see the steps that have, have been performed. So, Graham, okay. thank you for that. Yep. Uh, we've got a question from Jamil um, saying that, you know, We've got KMs and patrol agents that are also able to collect log data, um, like alerts and so forth. Is there is there a way for you to connect ITDA to those sources and, and consume and, and analyze those kinds of logs as well? So I, ITDA uses now, the preferred mechanism is for ITDA to use the patrol agent to collect its data. So as long as the data is available within um, 
the uh, you know to to the ITDA collection from the patrol agent, then we can collect that that log file data from the uh, patrol agent there. ITDA also consumes events from um, TSOM, which it will uh, fairly certainly now does that almost automatically as part of the configuration. You can set that up to have events from TSOM sent into ITDA. So if you send events in that also include a transaction ID, you could um, manipulate those together as well. Yeah, um, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering if I didn't phrase the question accurately. I think uh, he wasn't asking specifically about <clears throat> application transactions, but could you do the same kind of analysis on alert logs that you pulled? Um, and I, I think the answer is you obviously could do that kind of analysis if you wanted to. It may not be yes. distributed over time, but maybe it would make sense to have a session where we talk about analyzing events from TSOM and ITDA at some point in the future too. Mm, yes, yeah, but um, yeah, so you can certainly, uh, you know, if those alert logs are available to the patrol agent, then certainly ITDA can analyze those because effectively the, the collection is now done by the patrol agent for ITDA. Okay, sense. good. Thank you for that. All, All right. right. Any other questions, Seth? Um, I don't see any other questions in the Q and A. Um, we've got uh, folks thanking you for this, saying please do more. <laughs> so you're always welcome back. You know how much I appreciate you doing this to, for the community and. I'm happily happy to schedule as many sessions as you'd like to in the future. Uh, I'll give everybody else a chance. Um, if you've got issues typing the chat window, or sorry, in the Q and A, and you want to speak your question, let me know, and I can I can unmute you. But otherwise, if, uh, if we've got no other questions, I will terminate the session. And it looks like we can do that. All right. Well, thank you, Graham, for presenting. Apologies to everybody for the. Uh, the audio issues we have, we're hoping to get a new platform for next year and 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 re remediate remedy that, no pun intended. Um, but thanks everybody for your time and attention, and Graham, thanks for presenting. Thanks, Seth. All right, take care. Cheers. Bye. Bye.